Mr. Adrian Atkinson, Master of Ceremonies, the Honorable Dal Vaz, Minister of Science, Energy and Technology, Dr. Paris Liu Ayi, Jr., Chairman of the Scientific Research Council, the SRC, members of the board of the SRC, Dr. Shara Watson, Executive Director of the SRC and Management and Staff of the SRC, Dr. Olive Jean Burroughs, Executive Director of the NCST, other distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Someone asked me recently what I like best about Switzerland, and I said it's a difficult question, but the flag is a big plus. As Jamaica celebrates its 60th anniversary of independence, it is an opportune time to cast our eyes backward to various elements of our development. This allows us to assess whether what has been achieved in or through areas such as science and technology sufficiently equips Jamaica for the goals and aspirations that we have set for ourselves, or whether we will see the past as the golden age of science and innovation in Jamaica, gone and oft forgotten. In looking backwards, we acknowledge with pride the pioneering work done over the decades by some of the country's foremost scientists and technologists. Indulge me as I name a few, and at the risk of leaving out important contributors, I mention Professor Louis Grant, microbiologist and pathologist, Dr. Cicely Williams, who identified the protein deficiency disease, Kwashi Yorkar, Dr. T.P. Leckie, who developed the first breed of indigenous Jamaican cattle, the Jamaican Hope. He later, de later developed the Jamaican Red, Jamaican Brahman, and Jamaican Black cattle breeds. Professor Gerald Layla, physical chemist who is known for the discovery of hemotoxylin, a substance extracted from logwood and used in the diagnosis of cancer. He was the first head of ISENS, a multidisciplinary research lab which focuses on geochemical, environmental, and nuclear sciences. Professor Manley West and Dr. Albert Lockhart, pioneers of medical marijuana research and whose study of the Ganja plant led to the development of drugs Canasol and Asmasol for the treatment of glaucoma and asthma. Dr. Paula Tennant, biologist and botanist, who developed the transgenic Jamaican solar sunrise papaw, which is resistant to the papaw ring spot virus. Dr. Henry Lowe specializes in medical chemistry and extracting curative and therapeutic properties from local medicinal plants. Professor Errol Morrison, a biochemist who has conducted extensive research on indigenous medicinal plants as potential therapeutic agents in diabetes, mellitus, and hypertension. Let me also recognize the pivotal role our institutions have been playing, namely the UWI, UTEC Jamaica, Northern Caribbean University, the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries and its research arm, Bodles Research Station. In this context, I single out the Scientific Research Council, SRC, which over its six decades in existence has blazed a trail in showing us how to actualize the research commerce nexus and, as its tagline says, is making science and technology work for you. The questions which linger from contemplating the excellence mentioned earlier is whether and how much we have built on the earlier works and what, if anything, hinders the needed momentum? And more importantly, to what extent are our scientific and technological capabilities and outputs assisting in building resilience? The OECD definition of resilience is adopted in the ensuing discussion. The definition posits that resilience is the ability of households, communities, and nations to absorb and recover from shocks, whilst positively adapting and transforming their structures and means for living in the face of long-term stresses, change, and uncertainty. It underlines that resilience is about addressing the root causes of crises, while strengthening the capacities and resources of a system, whether economic, social, or environmental, in order to cope with risks, stresses, and shocks. Societies face a plethora of risks, stressors, and internal and external shocks. These range from climate change and natural hazards, including droughts, hurricanes, and floods, social, diseases, conflicts and violence, population changes and urbanization, to economic, 
supply chain disruptions, unfavorable commodity prices, financial crises, trade wars, and so on. This paper does not isolate and discuss the various risks or shocks individually, given that most are interrelated or have a triggering effect on others, have a negative impact on an economy and society, and require an integrated response. However, in setting the risk context for Jamaica and the Jamaican economy over the last decade or so, some specific external shocks, namely COVID-19 pandemic, climate change, and the war in Ukraine are discussed. Note should be taken that whilst the internal stressors and issues, such as pervasive and increasing crime and violence and rapid urbanization are not highlighted, their role in challenging the country's economic robustness and strength are recognized and remain strong candidates for the application of STNI solutions. The analysis of the role of STNI in facilitating economic resilience is also done in the context of Vision 2030 Jamaica, the National Development Plan, NDP, which identifies a fundamental role for STNI in achieving the long-term goals and outcomes for Jamaica. The plan calls for a deeper engagement in science and technology and a valuing of innovation towards achieving sustainable and inclusive development. Outcome 11 of Vision 2030 Jamaica specifically envisions Jamaica as a technology-enabled society, an aspiration underscored in Jamaica's national science, technology, and innovation policy catalyzing national development. The long-term policy envisages Jamaica cultivating and maintaining a dynamic science, technology, and innovation culture unleashing the creative potential of our people, catalyzing economic development and sustainable pro prosperity, contributing to social transformation, empowering Jamaicans to excel in an evolving world and contribute to the global frontiers of science. As implied earlier, resilience presumes the existence of risks or stressors which require response that allows a system to either minimize, cope with, or bounce back from specific impacts or combination of impacts. Three recent risks and their impacts and potential long-term effect on the Jamaican economy and STI-related and other response measures are discussed. Since the outbreak of the SARS-CoV-2 virus almost three years ago, the world has been reminded of the systemic and interconnected nature of risks. The COVID-19 pandemic, coupled with new Emerging and recurring challenges such as climate-related disasters and international conflicts, especially the Russian war in Ukraine, has demonstrated the ability of such events to negatively impact economic, social, and environmental systems, exacerbate pre-existing vulnerabilities, and disrupt a country's development trajectory. Locally and globally, the convergence of these crises have had the deleterious effect on the lives and livelihoods, particularly those of the most vulnerable, children, women, the elderly, persons living in poverty, and persons living with disabilities. Small island developing states, SIDS, like Jamaica, have been disproportionately affected by these shocks due to their heavy dependence on external trade, limited economic diversification, high indebtedness, and small populations. These factors, in addition to geographic location, exposure to natural hazards, and exploitation of environmental resources leading to ecological fragility, make the process of recovery from these impacts a very daunting one. A UN report published in June of 2022 indicated that after two years of fighting COVID-19, the world economy has been left in a fragile state. Today, 60% of workers have lower real incomes than before the pandemic. 60% of the poorest countries are in debt distress or at high risk of it. Developing countries miss $1.2 trillion per year to fill the social protection gap. And $4.3 trillion is needed per year, more than ever before, to meet the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. Though the Jamaican economy like other Caribbean SIDS, has begun to bounce back from COVID-19, particularly through the recovery in the tourism sector. There have been protracted effects of the pandemic, compounded by the impact of three tropical storms in July and August of 2021. Tropical Storm Eon, 
drought and extreme rainfall events in 2022, as well as a Russia-Ukraine crisis. Let's talk about the COVID-19 impact on the Jamaican economy. The United Nations reports that since the outbreak of the virus, approximately 77 million more people were living in extreme poverty in 2021 compared with 2019. The FAO indicates that in 2020, up to an additional 161 million people went hungry compared with the previous year. Overall, global trade declined by about US $2.5 trillion in 2020, approximately 9% compared with the level in 2019. The COVID-19 pandemic has had unprecedented and destructive impacts on the Jamaican society and economy. In the four months following the declaration of the first case in Jamaica, the cost of losses related to the COVID-19 outbreak amounted to Jamaican $84.59 billion, or 4.01% of GDP. Approximately 59% of this total was due to losses in the product productive sector, with tourism accounting for Jamaican $32.35 billion. Importantly, the pandemic resulted in significant alteration to the trajectory of the economy, which up to the time was showing positive signs, including low inflation rate, historically low unemployment, 7.3%, declining debt to GDP ratio, reducing poverty prevalence, forecast of 1% growth, according to Statin, which indicated that in July 2020, the employed labor force was 135,800 persons fewer than in July 2019, and the unemployment rate was 4.8 percentage points higher. In the hotels and restaurant sector, one of the main foreign exchange earners, there was a fallout in visitor expenditure of Jamaican $32.35 billion. This included a fallout of $15.71 billion in direct revenue to the government from the sector through a variety of taxes. The pandemic caused significant disruption to the supply chain across all sectors, resulting in the slowing or halting of project activities and subsequent cost and time overruns or delays in outputs. The fisheries sector, for example, faced challenges with the importation of hormones from Asia due to flight restrictions, adversely impacting the aquaculture subsector, which utilizes imported inputs. A number of social services projects, primarily those with infrastructure works and or training and social services activities, namely the Jamaica Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project, JDRVP, and the Rural Economic Development Project, Ready2, also reported delays in scheduled activities. The pandemic led to widespread disruption of delivering social protection services, primarily areas supporting education, health, assistance to the poor and vulnerable, as well as youth and persons living with disabilities. The impact was immediate for thousands of persons dependent on customer-driven livelihoods and informal economic activity. The loss of employment, whether permanent or temporary, was felt throughout every industry with a commensurate loss of markets and revenues. It directly affected 534,502 students and 26,000 primary and secondary school teachers whose teaching and learning experiences were disrupted by the closure of schools over a period of time. The response measures taken, including humanitarian relief, expansion in social protection, introduction of a stimulus package, suspension of the fiscal rules, and increase in the debt stock, cost the country 25 billion Jamaican dollars, the largest fiscal stimulus in the country's history, in the first few months to cushion the adverse impact of the pandemic and support domestic economic activity. Speaking now to climate-related hazards. The Caribbean is extremely vulnerable to natural disasters and climate change impacts, which bring with them high economic cost and the potential to derail and defer development. 
between 1970 and 2020, over 90% of disasters in the Caribbean had their origin in meteorological and hydroclimatic phenomena such as floods, storms, and tropical cyclones. The value of all economic damage and losses, directly or indirectly related to disasters in the last five decades, reached U.S. $137 billion. According, among small states, the average annual damage from disasters for the Caribbean is equivalent to 2.4% of GDP. The situation in Jamaica bears witness to the regional statistics. Between 2000 and 2021, the costs associated with damage and loss due to hydromet hazards amounted to over 135 billion Jamaican dollars, or 1.3% of GDP, with damage to infrastructure accounting for over 45% of that total. In the agricultural sector, hydromet events occurring over the last two decades have resulted in damage and losses to the sector of over 30 billion Jamaican dollars. This included the almost total obliteration of the banana export industry in 2007 and damage to other crops, livestock, irrigation systems and farm roads. The strong correlation between extreme climate events and decreased agricultural production is evidenced by the sharp falls recorded in the Agriculture Production Index, API, when there is a major climatic event. In light of these impacts, Jamaica has sought to harness the use of STNI to increase the accessibility and availability of climate data and information to support evidence-based decision-making towards improved resilience. Such information has been augmented by the use of supercomputers, a scientific platform for applied research and knowledge sharing, and the increased climate science technology at the University of the West Indies. The installation of climate information technologies across various sectors, such as the development of new and innovative disaster risk financing instruments, the incorporation of climate projections into the government's investment decision-making process, and the development of the Jamaica Systemic Risk Assessment Tool, JSRAT, by the University of Oxford Environmental Change Institute in collaboration with the PIOJ to visualize the results of analyses of climate risks and enable evaluation and prioritization of policies and investment options to reduce losses and enhance infrastructure resilience. Speaking now to the Ukraine crisis, the world is not new to conflicts, and there are ongoing conflicts in every region, each resulting in untold hardships for directly and indirectly affected populations. However, the war in Ukraine has been described as a crisis which has placed the world's population between the proverbial rock and a hard place, the rock being the severe price shocks in food, energy, and fertilizer markets due to the war, and the hard place, the extremely fragile context in which this crisis arrived. It has disrupted supply chains and impacted food security, energy costs, and financial markets. In June 2022, the UN reported that the FAO food price index reached record levels and was 20.8% higher than the previous year. Energy market volatility had increased, fertilizer prices more than doubled the 2000 to 2020 average, and maritime transportation costs more than tripled the pre-pandemic average. In Jamaica, the knock-on effects of this crisis are evident. Fuel prices have risen significantly, while costs of some fertilizers have soared by over 100% since 2021, both resulting in increased food and commodity prices. The crises have also impacted our inflation targets, with 12-month point-to-point inflation being at 9.3% as at September 2022. This represented the 14th consecutive month that inflation was above the target range of 4 to 6%. Inflation is projected to have peaked in April 2022 and is expected to remain above the target range for the next 12 to 15 months. As a part of its response, the Jamaican government is actively pursuing a range of measures to strengthen Jamaica's resilience to shocks such as these. For example, to improve Jamaica's food security in the event of fallouts in the agricultural sector, the government is increasing the commercial production of organic fertilizer from composting.
The production over importation approach has also been adopted, where the infrastructure has been improved to support the production of selected crops and livestock directed towards import substitution. The Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries is collaborating with the country's main fertilizer manufacturer to guide research for the development of new blends that will maximize efficiency and reduce the cost for farmers. The risk context painted for Jamaica is generally similar among other SIDS to varying degrees. In response to these crises, many governments in SIDS have placed emphasis on pursuing a harmonized approach to developing and building economic resilience. In this approach, greater emphasis is placed on development that is multi-sectoral, multi-dimensional, and people-centered, and which considers the cascading, interdependent nature of the multiple risks that we face. In the case of Jamaica, the approach is integrated in Vision 2030 Jamaica and proposes mainstreaming in most areas. The rationale is that STNI has a major role to play in building this resilient economy, given its potential contribution to human capital development, improved social well-being, and environmental protection. The importance of STI also permeates the COVID-19 Economic Recovery Task Force report. The report emphasizes the need to develop a digital economy and the creation of digital ecosystems, especially for MSMEs. The transition of more public services to the digital space and outlines the role of technology A. Improving productivity B. Providing flexibility in financial management and capacity C. Extending marketing channels, reach and impact D. Facilitating extended business collaboration E. Delivering enhanced customer service and F. Enabling mobile working and telecommuting Let's speak now to STNI and its impact on economic resilience. The literature affirms that STNI plays a critical role in fostering economic and social development. This has been done from the earliest time to exploit and transform nature and natural endowments for man's benefit. The countries at the forefront of the Industrial Revolution have all embraced science and technology as an important launch pad for development. These countries place emphasis on growth and innovation in industry, healthcare, education, product development, trade and commerce, communications, disaster management, and in exploring and conquering new frontiers. Their prioritization of investment in research and development has helped to fuel the growth of their economies and their competitiveness in the world. This is evident in OECD countries generally and in technologically advanced economies which tend to have the highest GERD to GDP ratio in the world. Having established the risk context for the country, using the example and impact of three converging crises, I move to look at the state of STNI in Jamaica and say a bit more on how it has been used to deal with these, boost production, productivity, and contribute to the competitiveness of the economy. STNI's role in the development of a knowledge-based economy and accomplishment of the goals of the Vision 2030 Jamaica National Development Plan and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is also examined. The assessment is predicated on the acceptance that there are drivers and barriers that impact the optimization of STNI for overall achievement of economic growth. These factors may include the policy environment, investment, education and knowledge, as well as culture. Let's examine a few of these. Political factors. The aim of inclusive, sustainable economic growth is to boost the economy's capacity to produce goods and services and establish the conditions for long-term growth through significant improvements in investments and competitiveness and through proactive collaborations with the private sector. The government has therefore focused on developing and maintaining a socio-economic climate that enables businesses to expand and employment to be created. It is resolute in its commitment to strengthening Jamaica's business climate and diversifying the economy to spur development as highlighted in its medium-term strategic priorities 2023 to 2027. 
the dedication to advance its reform, as well as to develop strategic priorities towards improved ease of doing business is reflected in automation of business processes, investments in digital technologies, development and expansion of entrepreneurial opportunities, increased international competitiveness and productivity, and increased investments. A number of national policies have been adopted to create an environment for sustainable development. Two such policies impacting STNI are the National Science, Technology and Innovation Policy, catalyzing national development, and the Open Data Policy. The promulgation of the National Science, Technology and Innovation Policy, catalyzing national development, is to foster a dynamic STNI culture, unleashing the creative potential of our people, catalyzing economic development and sustainable prosperity, contributing to social transformation, empowering Jamaicans to excel in an evolving world. The Open Data Policy seeks to establish an enterprising culture where open government data creates opportunities for prosperity by promoting free and openly available data for citizens, businesses, and the international community, and empowers citizens and businesses to actively engage in Jamaica's governance process. Other elements of the STNI policy environment include the establishment of standards, institutions, and infrastructure. For standards development, certification of public and private entities along with national product and service standards have been adopted to bolster the national quality infrastructure. A total of 31 companies have met ISO 9001 2015 requirements and 23 companies with product certifications from the National Certification Body of Jamaica. Notwithstanding the improvements made, a deficit in the environment remains, the status of the research laboratories and the adequacy of researchers. An audit of government laboratories conducted in 2015 revealed that most of the labs are in a deplorable condition. Majority of critical equipment have not been calibrated and many have resorted to primarily conducted analytical services in order to earn revenue at the expense of research and development activities. Let's look at some of the economic factors. For the achievement of economic resilience, public and private investment in research, development and innovation are fundamental. Gross expenditure on research and development, GERD, as a percentage of GDP, is an important STNI indicator for countries to show their commitment to exploration of new knowledge, innovation, and product and service development. So important is this issue that it is one of the indicators in the Sustainable Development Goals 9.5.1, research and development expenditure as a percentage of GDP. Globally, GERD for 2021 was estimated at US $2.4 trillion in terms of purchasing power parity, PPP. In the past decade, the government of Jamaica has been increasing its budgetary allocation on STNI and has supported priority areas, including digital transformation and research. In 2021, allocation to public STNI agencies was estimated at Jamaican $13 billion, a 19% change in, compar in comparison to 2020. For R&D specifically, in the same year, revised estimates from selected STNI programs amounted to Jamaican $1.45 billion. Notwithstanding the nominal increase in budgetary allocation, this is still not adequate to support high impact or breakthrough research and scientific discoveries necessary to play a more significant role in the country's development. In fact, compared with other countries, Jamaica's GERD to GDP is substantially low. Available data have indicated that less than 0.1% of Jamaica's GDP is spent on R&D. Concerning innovation, the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development Creative Economy Outlook 2022 posits that the creative economy is a fast-growing sector that promotes innovation and contributes to a country's economic development. The orange economy, cultural and creative industries, comprises the creation, production and commercialization of contents intangible and cultural in nature, which are usually protected by copyright in the form of goods and services. The report indicated that global exports of creative goods over a 10-year period increased from $419 million in 2010 to $524 million in 2020. 
Moreover, in the same period, exports of creative services increased from $487 billion to approximately $1.1 trillion. South-South trade has been highlighted as being vital for economic development in order to create new trading opportunities and diversify exports. Notwithstanding the paucity of data on the size of the creative industries in Jamaica, its contribution to the economy is evident. The creative industry significantly contributes to GDP and job creation as between 2011 and 2016, 12,000 jobs were created in the sector. The copyright sector alone contributes about 5.1% to the GDP, accounting for 3% of all employment in Jamaica. Jamaica's vibrant cultural and creative industries are best known on the global stage for the success of its musicians and music producers. Festivals and the film sector are also burgeoning, indicating that the cultural and creative industries, CCI, are a key driver for Jamaica's sustainable development. Jamaica has and continues to tap into diverse creativity and achieve greater recognition of the, cult the country's culture and identity through technology and cultural innovation. The National Science, Technology and Innovation Policy provides for enabling a culture of innovation across all sectors and advancing economic growth through ST&I capacity. Looking now at social factors, in exploring the social factors required to optimize STNI development, it is recognized that the ability to harness the power of research and innovation is influenced by science literacy, culture, and human capital. Science literacy is defined as gaining greater knowledge and understanding of the physical, life, and earth sciences. It also includes understanding the nature of science, the scientific enterprise, and the role science plays in society and personal life. Existing literature has highlighted the importance of scientific knowledge in driving innovation and growth. It has been recognized that STEM is important in improving economic growth and increasing opportunities for the Jamaican people. Efforts have been made to increase scientific literacy in schools as the Ministry of Education and Youth has sought to transform selected high schools into STEM academies and to integrate the STEM methodology into the National Standards Curriculum for primary and secondary schools. This has been accompanied by increased focus on the training areas such as renewable energy, industrial electronics, and mechanical engineering, which were assigned to eight technical and one non-technical institution. However, challenges remain in increasing scientific literacy in Jamaica. A recent assessment of the state of science, technology, engineering, the arts, and math mathematics, STEAM education in Jamaica, found that without science literacy, there is a limit on the nation's capacity to tap into new and emerging technologies, which have the potential to increase economic growth. The Technology and Innovation Report for 2021 suggests that governments focus on promotion of STEM subjects, particularly among female students. Science literacy is obviously influenced by exposure to and performance in science education. Performance in STNI at the primary level is usually ev evaluated based on the results from mathematics and science in the sittings of the primary exit profile PEP. Assessment of the performance of students in mathematics and science in PEP in 2020 indicated that in these subject areas, 66% of candidates attain mastery in maths and 37.8% attain proficiency in science. So, thus, the base for science moving to the secondary level is not strong. This situation is not significantly improved at the secondary level, as a relatively small segment of the cohort continue with the sciences, and performance in maths is usually relatively low, 42.5% in 2021. While higher education institutions, HEIs, have continued to spearhead scientific research, application of technology, capacity building, and knowledge sharing in line with national development goals, they are impacted by the quality of input as well as resources to expand and carry out research. 
Nevertheless, collaboration between HEIs has resulted in several research studies in subject areas including sargassum, cannabis, research computing, science education, and environmental monitoring and climate change. These advances are expected to have a significant impact on national development. Let's speak to culture. Culture is the ideas, customs, and social behavior of a particular people or society or way of life of a people. Anecdotally, one could say that there is a culture of innovation in Jamaica. This is reinforced through a number of proverbs, Tony Han make fashion, make blood out of stone, tan pan crooked make straight, when trouble take your picnic shot fit you, and so on. These underline the culture of creativity and can-do attitude in the Jamaican persona, bold, adventurous, and entrepreneurial, which inspire innovation. Much of this is demonstrated in the strong country brand, Brand Jamaica, rich culinary offerings, and the various music forms, ska, rocksteady, reggae, and dancehall, given to the world. Additionally, the evidence of scientific research over the years provides the demonstration that both the capability and confidence exists locally. What is clearly needed to enhance innovation are the policies, incentive structure, resources, and support infrastructure. Since the ratification of the Convention on the Protection and Promotion of the Diversity of Cultural Expressions, 2005, in 2007, the government has led the implementation of this global legal instrument on contemporary culture and creativity. The Convention provides a framework for the management and administration of culture. Article 16 of the Convention advocates for preferential treatment of cultural goods and services and prompts parties to facilitate the mobility of artists, particularly from the Global South. It speaks to my media diversity, digital technology, and gender equality as critical drivers for sustainability within the cultural and creative industries. Turning now to human capital. Existing research illustrates the importance of a country's human capital in fostering innovation. Improvements in a country's human capital can result in an increase in innovative entrepreneurs and products. These improvements are made through education and training. Over the past 10 years, there has been an increase in the proportion of the labor force with training. However, the majority of the labor force, 61.8%, as in 2021, continues to be without training. Conversely, 29.1% of the Jamaican labor force is certified, and this includes vocational certification, degree, or diploma. The proportion of the labor force without training has continued to be higher for the male labor force relative to the female labor force. In 2021, 70% of the average male labor force had no training. It has been proven that a well-trained workforce results in an increase in innovation in companies because it strengthens capacity to absorb and develop new knowledge. The level of training in the labor force acts as a barrier to innovation and productivity in Jamaica. Training and certifications provide the tools necessary for individuals to acquire knowledge needed to innovate. The literature indicates that higher education is especially important in providing the prerequisite for stimulating innovation activity. Additionally, an OECD study indicated countries where a large proportion of the workforce is employed in jobs requiring greater use of reading skills tend to be more economically productive. The tertiary enrollment rate, 29.4% in 2021, and the proportion of the population with tertiary education are also deterrents to high levels of scientific and technological output. Some reforms have been introduced at the secondary level through the Sixth Form Pathways Program and should contribute positively in the near future. However, to foster more inclusive growth and a diversified economy, it is imperative that the labor force is reskilled, learning new skills to transition into a new role, and upskilled, that's new skills to become better at the current role. This makes it easier for workers to transition from one job to another where there is a disruption in one area and to more directly benefit from and contribute to STNI. 
speaking to technological factors. As the world moves towards the fourth industrial revolution, the access to and the use of technology, the dissemination of knowledge, and the use of information and communications technologies, ICT, have become more prevalent. Jamaica continues to pursue strategies to improve digital inclusion and participation through programs at the national and sector levels for, for wider broadband connectivity, more channels for engagement between government, businesses, and citizens, infusion of ICT in curriculum at all levels of education, improved cybersecurity awareness, and funding for innovation. Jamaica measures its progress in ICT maturity vis-a-vis -vis other countries via surveys conducted by the ITU and the UN. According to an ITU survey covering 2021, mobile cellular infrastructure coverage remains high at 100%, although households with computers lag at 39%, and individuals with ICT skills remain low, ranging from 1% for those considered advanced to 15% for those with basic skills. The UN's e-government development index, EGDI, for 2022 has Jamaica with a rating of 0 0.5906 out of a maximum of 1, ranked at 102 out of 193 countries and below the average for the region. The EGDI comprises several sub-indices, online services, te telecommunication infrastructure, and human capital. Notwithstanding falling behind the regional index average, improvements were marked for online services and te telecommunication infrastructure, reflecting the onboarding of increased services through the GOJ portal, as well as expansion of broadband connectivity. Jamaica's Human Capital Index at 0.7148 was below the regional average of 0.7523, indicative of the need to engage in capacity building, while its e-participation index was 0.2841, with the country ranking 123 out of 193 countries. As seen from these indices, while there have been gains, there is room for improvement. Looking at the legal factors, instituting globally recognized standards for protecting intellectual property rights will drive a resilient economy. Several advances have been made to improve innovation and protect intellectual property in Jamaica. These include expansion of the information and communications technology infrastructure, revision and update of the Patent and Design Act of 2020, and the accession to the Patent Cooperation Treaty, PCT, facilitating international patent protection of local innovations and inventions. Looking at the environmental factors, research and innovation in the blue, green, and bioeconomy can contribute to a resilient economy. The blue economy, as defined by the World Bank, seeks to promote economic growth, social inclusion, and the preservation or improvement of livelihoods, while at the same time ensuring environmental sustainability of the oceans and coastal areas. This concept has been even more relevant for small island developing states in actualizing sustainable development. Components of the blue economy include harvesting and trade of marine living resources, extraction and use of marine non-living resources, use of renewable non-exhaustible natural forces, and commerce and trade in and around oceans. Research and innovation are key to the development of the blue economy, as knowledge and evidence-based decisions will drive Jamaica's economic stability. It is anticipated that the blue economy will grow and expand to incorporate emerging industries and areas such as blue biotechnology, blue energy, marine mineral resources, and deep sea mining and processing. These are expected to have direct spin-off effects on job creation and employment, research and development, as well as education. The green economy refers to a low-carbon, resource-efficient, and socially inclusive economy, while significantly reducing environmental risks and ecological scarcities. There is strong emphasis on investment in renewable energy and the advancement of the policy and legislative framework for the deployment of electric vehicles is progressing. All industries and systems that rely on biological resources are included in the bioeconomy. 
The bioeconomy is a fast-growing and human capital-intensive sector projected to grow by at least 50% by 2030 globally. Worldwide, the bioeconomy has resulted in economic, social, and environmental gains. Locally, considerable progress has been made over the years in the application of tissue culture technology to support the bioeconomy by facilitating production of clean planting materials for the propagation of crops such as sweet potato, Irish potato, and sweet yam, as well as the preservation of endangered endemic species of orchid and cacti. A number of barriers stymie Jamaica's ability to effectively and efficiently harness research and innovation for sustainable development and economic growth. Prominent among them are low levels of investment in R&D, lack of a national innovation system, and a weak research and innovation culture. Investment in R&D. The basis for future innovation is through investment in research, which underpins much of the innovation process. However, there is limited availability of funding and incentives in R&D, albeit the increased budgetary allocations in STNI over the years. Increasing access to finance, especially to micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises, remains one of the critical steps needed for firms to grow and diversify their production and customer base. While a stable macroeconomic environment is necessary in this regard, more needs to be done to expand and promote the lending instruments that are available and applicable to MSMEs, researchers, and innovation. Funding issues also exist within educational institutions. The National STEAM Education Report for Jamaica 2021 found that at the tertiary level, greater investment needs to be made in infrastructure, for example, lab equipment and laboratories. There is also an issue at the early childhood to grade 11 level, as 86.6% of infrastructure were found to be inadequate. Without adequate resources, it becomes challenging to develop scientific literacy and develop STNI training and popularization. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development defines a national innovation system as that set of distinct institutions which jointly and individually contribute to the development and diffusion of new technologies and which provides the framework within which governments form and implement policies to influence the innovation process. As such, it is a system of interconnected institutions to create, store, and transfer the knowledge, skills, and artifacts which define new technologies. The wide disconnect between knowledge creators and knowledge use, absence of innovation policies and legislation, and limited access to technology transfer and innovation financing or investments are issues preventing a dynamic and responsive innovative innovation system. However, strengthening of critical institutions to improve the national innovation system, such as the National Commission on Science and Technology, NCST, the Jamaica Intellectual Property Office, JIPO, and the Scientific Research Council, SRC, is vital. Patents indicate a country's inventive performance and help to illustrate technological change and innovation which are formative factors in determining the productivity and competitiveness of a country. Over a five-year period, 2017 to 2021, Jamaicans filed 77 patent applications. However, only seven patents were granted in Jamaica over the period. The Global Innovation Index, GII, is a detailed econometric index that allows countries to measure their innovation performance against other countries. The analysis that accompanies the index also helps to guide the formulation of long-term policies for improved productivity, job creation, and economic development. In 2021, Jamaica ranked 74th out of 132 countries on the GII. Research and development, use of information technologies, trade diversification, patents and labor productivity growth were identified as areas for further improvement. The low patent filings and rank on the GII underscores Jamaica's weak research and innovation culture. Speaking now to crime and violence. 
High levels of crime and violence can make it difficult for Jamaica to attract foreign investors, which is critical to support investments and innovation in science and technology. In assessing the impact of crime on the Jamaican society in the National Security Policy of 2013, it was noted that these profoundly serious problems have deterred investment, destroyed capital formation, and discouraged business development. It also goes on to note that, among other things, the cost of crime and corruption to Jamaica includes the loss of foreign investment. Additionally, spending on crime reduction effectively reduces resources available for other areas. We must ensure, however, that the necessary steps are taken to protect the country against threats such as cyber attacks. Legislative and technical systems such as the Data Protection Act of 2020, the Cyber Crimes Act of 2015, and the National Cyber Security Strategy of 2015 have been developed to protect businesses and citizens. To drive home the point, in the context of economic development, economic resilience is the ability to recover quickly from a shock, to withstand the effect of a shock, and to avoid the shock altogether. Economic resilience can be built by identifying and anticipating risks, evaluating the risks to its potential impact on key assets, and building capacity to prevent, withstand, and quickly recover from these risks, such as those identified earlier. These steps are underpinned by research and innovation. Related to the impact of the pandemic discussed earlier, the government of Jamaica sought to mitigate the impact of risk stemming from the crisis by implementing a stimulus package, which included the COVID allocation of resources for employees program. This was made possible by the economic reform program that was implemented over the last 10 years that has entrenched macroeconomic stability and therefore reduced public sector risk and financial sector risk. While more needs to be done to further entrench macroeconomic stability, there is a clearly articulated strategy on the way forward and institutions being developed to lock in the progress being made, such as the establishment of the Independent Fiscal Commission. Economic resilience can be strengthened by developing policies that attempt to reduce the risks and effects of major crises. Efforts have been made towards strengthening the policy framework through the development of the National Disaster Risk Financing Policy, which is in draft stage, and the Comprehensive Disaster Risk Management Policy, which is at green paper stage, which seek to effectively provide policy direction for the integration and implementation of disaster risk management and climate change adaptation across all sectors. So the question remains, how do we actualize a country's potential to build economic resilience through STNI? STNI is recognized and treated as cross-cutting as it serves to advance all four goals under Vision 2030 Jamaica, covering the economic, social, and environmental areas, as well as advancing governance. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development also recognizes the importance of STNI towards achieving its 17 Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, particularly within the context of accelerated efforts in the decade to 2030. SDG 9 emphasizes the need to build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization, and foster innovation. Particularly, Target 9.1 develops sustainable, resilient, and inclusive infrastructure, and Target 9.5 enhance research and upgrade industrial technologies are important indicators for the STNI landscape in achieving the 2030 Agenda. Over successive medium-term periods, focus has been given to addressing the barriers to economic resilience in the successive three-year medium-term socio-economic policy frameworks, MTFs, under the National Strategy Framework. This has included efforts to maximize the contribution of STNI and lay the foundation for the long-term transition to a knowledge-based society and innovation-based economy. Having identified some STNI-related drivers and barriers to economic resilience, the following recommendations are proposed. 1. Increased investment and funding in R&D. 
R&D expenditure is a key factor in creation of new products and services resulting in significant economic and social benefits. The global average of GER to GDP is 1.7%, while that of Jamaica is 0.06%. This relatively low ratio highlights the importance of increasing investment. Notwithstanding increases in the funding of STNI, there is still need for improvement. Two, establishment of a dedicated research fund for STNI and strengthening and leveraging existing public sector funding schemes can aid in improvements of Jamaica's R&D capabilities. Three, greater private sector involvement. The private sector can be the engine of growth in establishing stability and support to researchers, innovators, on, and entrepreneurs. Provision of venture capital, emphasis on public-private partnerships, and promotion and strengthening of the research industry nexus can create synergistic relationships, allowing new ideas within the STNI ecosystem. The private sector is encouraged to buy Jamaican expertise, as well as have more confidence in local institutions to develop and design high-quality products and services. Four, crowding in more of the indigenous Tonya Han McFashion innovators into the formal economy. This might include strengthening and expanding agencies like the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, JBDC, and the Scientific Research Council, SRC. Improve all levels of education. Fostering STEM education throughout the formal educational systems can strengthen skills and promote technological advances. A development policy for STEM education, including curriculum development and delivery, is recommended. At the same time, expanding on-the-job training and certification programs should be prioritized. Focus on weaknesses identified in the Global Innovation Index, GII. The GII ranking for Jamaica highlights market sophistication, infrastructure, knowledge and technology outputs, and human capital and research as areas for improvement. Greater focus can be placed on these indicators in order to increase our rank on the GII. Seven, opportunities for scaling innovative ideas. Incentivizing R&D and innovation by means of grants, awards, tax schemes, and other mechanisms can boost the morale within the society. It is also crucial to recognize the vast economic benefits that can be derived from innovation through use of indigenous knowledge. And eight, foster technology transfer through partnership with more developed economies and universities, as well as through South-South collaboration. This will promote the sharing and learning of innovation activities and will enhance the implementation of our technology agenda. So in closing, Jamaica has produced breakthrough research and pioneering STNI work in the past and continues to do so now. The need to develop a strong research industry nexus and a collaborative approach can only help to face external threats such as natural disasters, pandemics, and conflicts. Effective planning and coordination are required among all stakeholders to face the changing world of new technologies. However, the demands of the modern economy and society are greater and more complex and require significant and concerted efforts to maximize the benefits of science and technology. It is therefore vital that commitment to harnessing the power of research and innovation is sustained in order to pave the way for a greater future for all Jamaicans as we make this a place of choice to live, work, raise families and do business. Thank you for your time. I wish you a successful conference. All the best. God bless you.